Next this hour, Israel has expressed strong concern over Iran's dispatch of two warships to cross Egypt's Su Su Suez Canal. Prime Minister Netanyahu says the move will bring even more tension to an already unstable region. The two ships are due to sail through the canal on Monday en route to the Mediterranean. Well, they will be the first Iranian warships to navigate those waters since the country's Islamic Revolution of 1979. Let's cross live now to RT's Paula Sleer, who's uh, keeping track of these developments uh, from Tel Aviv. Paula, what are the Israelis afraid of here? Well, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that he views with utmost gravity the passing of these two Iranian warships through the Suez Canal to the Mediterranean Sea. He says that it's really an attempt by Tehran to take advantage of the current situation, to exploit it and to extend its regional influence. We also heard today from the Israeli Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman, and he says that this is nothing short of provocation. Israel and Iran have not had diplomatic relations for the past 30 years, and Israel is concerned that Iran is sending weapons to its neighbors that will ultimately be used against the Jewish state. Israel is also concerned that back home, Tehran is building nuclear arsenal. Now, Iranian state television is reporting that the two ships have already passed through the Suez Canal, that they're headed towards a Syrian port. Now, this will send and is sending alarm bells off in Israel because Israeli-Syrian relations are strained. Israel convinced and is Israeli officials saying as much over the past few years that Iran is supplying weapons through Syria that ultimately land up in the hands of Hezbollah in Lebanon. Now, the United States is adding fuel to the whole situation. The U.S. State Department recently set up a Twitter account, and it is using that Twitter account to post tweets in Farsi that support anti-Iranian government demonstrators out on the streets of Tehran. We haven't seen the U.S. State Department do anything like that, supporting or even expressing any kind of opinion on the same kind of demonstrations that are happening in Bahrain and Yemen. But just to give you an idea of what some of these Farsi tweets are saying the U.S. State Department saying that Iran should allow peaceful demonstrations to take to take place. It should afford these demonstrators the same rights as Egyptian demonstrators, those who took to Tahrir Square, and the U.S. State Department saying that it recognizes the historic role of social media in bringing change in the Middle East. Now, this gateway was closed to Iran for more than 30 years. How did Tehran manage to get permission now? And are we getting any hints as to what might happen if these ships go through the canal? Well, this has been in the pipeline for the past week. It wasn't clear whether or not Egyptian officials would actually agree to give Iran permission to send these two ships through. As you correctly say, since 1979, since the Iranian Revolution, there have been no Iranian warships that have actually passed through the Suez Canal. This is the first major diplomatic headache for the Egyptian interim government, for the ruling military council. As you well know, President Mubarak had a close relationship with the United States. He was an ally of the U.S. and at the same time, relations between him and Iran were strained for the past 30 years. It is not clear exactly why they gave permission. We haven't had any insight on that. But what we have been told reportedly is that Egyptian officials have checked the cargo. They are confident that there is nothing suspicious on board. And as a result, they have allowed the frigate and the supply ship to go through. This is sending alarm, bo alarm bells out in Israel. Lots of concerns as to what this means for the future, whether or not more ships will be allowed to go through, and whether or not this does signal a change in relations, particularly between Egypt and Iran, and and whether or not Israel can continue to believe that Egypt will support it in its future foreign policy decisions. Artis Paul Slea reporting live from Tel Aviv.